Okay, we're live. Okay, uh, welcome everybody to the second part of our um, strategic planning session. Uh, we just had our training session in Cameron and I wanted to acknowledge for the minutes uh, the general committee discussed the uh, presentation concerning a confidential education and training session on uh, strategic on approaches to priority setting. Uh, there were no votes taken during the closed portion of the meeting with the exception, uh, sorry, uh, there were no votes taken during the closed portion of the meeting. Uh, as we are now in open session, uh, we are ready to move into the second presentation that's concerning a midterm review of council strategic priorities. And that is the business of the day. So I will hand it over from here to, I believe it's Mr. Krause who's gonna kick us off. Oh, and I should introduce since we're uh, streaming live, I should also note of course that we are continuing to do the physical distancing required by the pandemic. Uh, but we have with us today, Mr. Kirk Fox, who is our uh, facilitator to help take council through the strategic planning uh, priority session. It's a bit of an unusual format for general committee uh, in that it's uh, facilitated rather than the, the typical rules of procedure, although we will move a motion at the end if one is appropriate, uh, but it is intended to be an open discussion and that open discussion is first informed by a bit of a review of where we've come from over the last two years and what has been accomplished to, to this point in the term of council. So with that, I'll hand it off, maybe a bit better introduction to Mr. Krause. Thank you, Mayor Lehman. Um, who's running the slides? Ryan, have you, have you got control of the slides? Yes. <clears throat> awesome, thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, members of council. Um, so we're getting together today to talk about the strategic priorities. A um, couple of hours of work already done this morning around uh, uh, training, uh, and we thought we would uh, spring sort of right into the discussion around the strategic priorities. Uh, as members of council will know that uh, earlier this week, we provided a fairly extensive memo outlining some of the great uh, accomplishments already to date uh, in just two short years uh, in achieving council strategic priorities. Uh, and part of that, we, uh, we showed a sneak peek of the new dashboard that will be rolled out uh, this year, uh, which will be available to the public to see um, our achievements towards the strategic priorities uh, with actually the ability to drill down and garner additional uh, background information. So recognizing that you've already got about a 30 page memo that really fully informs you around some of the accomplishments of the strategic priorities. I thought what I would do in really three or four minutes is just kind of go across the tops of the waves uh, on some of the highlights uh, with no specific uh, uh, order of importance, but just to call them out, uh, really to frame the discussion uh, and the context uh, for council. Next slide, please, Ryan. Thank you. Uh, and this should look very familiar to members of council. Uh, it was, uh, you know, in, in the before, as they say, uh, two years ago, we got together and, and, uh, and worked through what uh, the newly minted council wanted to achieve in their four year term. Uh, this summer council uh, drafted the motion that they wanted to review those uh, those strategic priorities and get together uh, once again uh, midterm and discuss uh, are they still relevant? Do we need to apply uh, mm -hmm. uh, an accelerant to some areas or and do we need to pull back in other areas? Uh, and that will be the uh, focus of the, uh, the discussion moving forward. Uh, next slide, please, Ryan. Uh, members of council, I just thought I would touch on uh, some of your strategic priorities under, under growing our economy. Uh, the organization in the city has seen the, the launch of the Sandbox Center uh, for entrepreneurship getting opened. Uh, we launched the digital uh, Main Street program. Uh, we have supported the Accelerate Summit, uh, its conference for entrepreneurs. Uh, we've delivered an economic uh, recovery action plan necessitated by the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, Council has approved the municipal accommodation tax uh, to feed into additional uh, tourism measures. Uh, they have also tour uh, approved the tourism master plan uh, and we have achieved ongoing partnerships uh, and additional collaboration with key stakeholders uh, throughout the city. And as by way of key performance indicators, uh, members of council will note uh, that the percentage of full-time employment uh, in the city of Barrie for 2019 uh, hit 78.2%, .2%, a significant achievement for the city of Barrie. Uh, also of note, uh, our jobs to housing ratio in 2019, for what every uh, one house uh, unit being created, uh, we actually uh, were able to support the creation of 1.41 jobs 
uh, at the same time, a significant uh, achievement. Next slide, thank you. Under the Fostering a Safe and Healthy City, members of council, we completed the stormwater master plan, the energy management plan, uh, implemented measures to protect Lake Simcoe and outdoor recreation facility studies. Uh, we continued with the developing of the framework for the sustainable development, the circular economy, and the community energy and greenhouse gas reduction plan. We also completed ecological restoration of eight, more than eight hectares of naturalized land. We had the FCM grant uh, provided to the Climate Change Network for a net zero analysis of the Sadlin Arena. And in recreation, we achieved the five, high five accredi accreditation uh, for recreation services recognized throughout the province. And by way of key performance indicators, uh, in 2019, uh, we were able to see 153 affordable housing units built. Uh, and our participation in the REC access uh, uh, program achieved 1,523 participants. Next slide. Under building strong neighborhoods, council has witnessed and facilitated the draft of a new official plan, which was released for a 90 day public commenting period, undertaking the stormwater asset management plan, which is to be completed uh, in the fall of 2020. We provided updated engineering standards for water infrastructure, and we achieved the new community improvement plan, and we're now on the second intake, uh, which took place in early 2020. In addition, the Holly pump station and force main was completed. Next slide. Under offering innovative and citizen driven services members of council, we launched the proactive road resurfacing program. We achieved the new ERP, uh, which is now SAP, has gone live. Uh, we have made available to our residents e-billing for water and wastewater bills. We've had the implementation of the e-tendering platform to make doing business with City Hall that much easier. Uh, we ran a Ward 3 by-election uh, and for the first time ever used online and phone voting. We launched our APLI program, uh, which is the application uh, tool for permits, licensing, and inspection requests. And by way of key performance indicators for 2019, uh, our customer service satisfaction index was at 96%. And in reported cost savings through innovation and modernization, we recognized $389,000 in savings. Under improving the ability to get around, we introduced pavement condition assessment data to identify when roads should be fixed. We implemented the universal transit pass with Georgian College. We have finished I think as of Monday, the Dunlop Streetscape project. And we've, had, we've, had, we've put in place the transportation master plan update. We have the Highway 400 crossing at Harvey and Big White Point, uh, which is just in the process of being completed this spring. Uh, and we have the expansion from Essa to Bryn. We have reconstruction of Essa Road and the Ann Street intersection and the resurfacing of Hearst Drive, Minette's Point to Bay Lane. And by way of key performance indicators, I would note for council, that under the kilometers of active transportation routes, we have built an additional uh, 2.154 kilometers of sidewalks and trails. Under rider tr uh, transit ridership, uh, certainly uh, um, we continue to grow in that area. Uh, our 2019 uh, numbers indicate that almost 3.3 million riders participated in Barry Transit in 2019. Members of council, that certainly is not an exhaustive list. It is a, a very short summary of some of the achievements uh, that you have achieved towards your 2018 uh, strategic priorities. Uh, and with that, I will turn it over to Kirk. Thank you, Michael. Um, so thank you for walking us through the progress made in the first two years. And uh, what I wanna do now is, is share just um, three slides to start us off, which summarizes uh, the interviews that we all did one-on-one -on -one to kind of get us to a place where we could then review the mid-year and, and look forward. So our objective um, today now is to come to an agreement on the priority areas to focus on for the last half of the term. And so um, what you see in front of you um, looks similar to the order that we just saw, but there is a slight difference. And I asked you all the question of how would you rank these priorities in importance to you and your constituents? And so um, 
growing our economy was ranked number one and two by the majority of, uh, of all of you in importance. Priority two, fostering a safe and healthy city. Um, almost everybody spoke to the importance of this. Uh, even those who felt it was more the responsibility at times of the county um, still agreed on its importance. A few discussed how to work with the county to make this happen and leverage significant amount of dollars the city contributes to the county. So those were some of the additional comments on priority number two. Priorities two and three were actually very close in proximity and importance based on all of your responses, but still remain in the order shown here. Most of you also indicated the link between the top three priorities, growing the economy, fostering a safe and healthy city and building strong neighborhoods. And for example, mentioning things like developers, affordable housing and greener city. Each of those are linked and they come from each of those three priorities. Finally, there was consensus that number five is, the, um, is number five, offering innovative and citizen driven services. So that's just a summary of how you all rank them based on our discussion. Go to the next slide, please, Ryan. So after we ranked the general priority categories, I asked you which specific areas still need additional focus. Here are the top three responses based on the number of you who put them forward. So affordable housing and homelessness, 73% of you said that this is one of the top areas of additional focus needed for the second half of the term. Recovering from the effects of COVID-19, over half of you, 55% mentioned this. And in various ways, um, I've summarized it here, you, uh, 50, at least half of you mentioned the downtown, waterfront core projects and walkable neighborhoods. So each of these come from some of those different general categories that we just looked at before. So obviously this slide doesn't capture all of these specific suggestions that were made, only those where at least half of you suggested them. Um, we'll have an opportunity to add in others that you feel are important that might not be specifically noted here in just a moment. Next slide, please. Um, I then asked you what's missing from the council priorities and um, almost all of you, 82% of you said really nothing is missing. Priorities are comprehensive. There were other comments of, you know, we just need to focus on what those priorities are, et cetera. Um, but by far the majority said, no, it's all there. Nothing is missing. Next slide, please. So I wanna start here to kick off the discussion, just to reiterate where at least half or more said these are the top specific areas of additional focus and go from here. So where do we take this from here to add subcategories to discuss in depth more of the ones that you see here? What are you wanting to add that isn't on here, uh, et cetera, for our discussion? And I will try to facilitate this, um, you know, similar to what we did. Uh, if we can just jump in when you're ready to start commenting on this. <clears throat> okay, Claire. Um, I guess I, I feel a little bit frustrated right off the top when the uh, our seventy three percent of us agreed that affordable uh, housing and homelessness was was the top priority. Um, we really don't have any jurisdiction in that. Uh, I mean, uh, most of it uh, social housing is is handled by the by the county, who just sends us the bill. Um, and I guess the question that I have in my mind is how do how do we um, actually move something forward um, on that? Um, and that, I'm sure there must be things that we can do. Um, but you know, like the we've got lots of proposals for development in the downtown and elsewhere. Very few have anything to do or include any affordable housing. Um, and is there a way that we can sort of move that needle? Um, and I guess the other comment I would make is that um, we're affected by COVID. Um, and that is probably the, the biggest uh, piece that this council um, 
has had to deal with. Um, and it seems to me that there seems to be a light at the end of the tunnel. It may be six months, it may be a year, but um, what is, I, I, I think, you know, we really need to focus on that one and say, what is it that we need to do to help Barry move through um, this, what's left of COVID successfully so that we come out the other end stronger and, and better. So those are my comments off the top. Okay, and just for the record, I believe notes are being taken by at least a couple of people on all of your comments. So that's why we're not adding them to the slides that we had on before. Okay, thank you, Claire. Okay, Jim. Thank you. Now, maybe just to pick up on Councillor Ritma's point, uh, and we have been uh, advised through some recent um, reminders from staff that we've done well as it relates to afford meeting affordable housing goals. But and I think it's interesting because you know, we all have our perspectives. And from my perspective, in my um, you know professional role, my my view of affordable housing is very very specific because I've worked with people who have very, very low incomes, marginalized. So I think of very, very deep subsidies, which, which to your point, Councilor Reaper, you're right, that's more of the county and funding that would come from uh, the federal government and province to really get those deep subsidies, even supportive housing. So that's a real important sector um, that you know we're not involved in, but could be supportive of. Uh, in some way. So I know we've had those conversations at council and had great examples like Lucy's Place in Barrie and some other opportunities that may exist. So but I think when I think about affordable housing, I think about affordable living. And I think when I remember walking neighborhoods uh, during campaigning, it wasn't just, it was people who were young um, trying to get into the market who didn't see housing as affordable for them and people who were in housing but were on fixed income, seniors, who are having, it, having a hard time affording, maintaining their housing. So I almost see more as affordable living and some of the developments that we've always had this really, really a low vacancy rate in Barrie, so low that we're on a list with Toronto and Vancouver as places that have these really, really high rents in Canada. And, you know, Barrie's a great place, but on those lists, that's a list you wouldn't want to be on necessarily. But some of the things that we're doing, we're receiving as developments are increasing the uh, amount of housing available, rental housing available, which actually will hopefully will, you know, I'm no expert in this, but, you know, more, more uh, volume in the market, more supply will hopefully, you know, allow us to see, you know, maybe a recorrection in, in the bare rental market and make housing more affordable by having more volume. So it's, it's a real cumulative effort. And I think there has been some good signs and, and where we can support those really, really deep uh, um, affordable housing initiatives we've been trying to, and I think we have a good, when we have conversations, council's pretty aligned on that, I, I like to think. So as far as how can we do what we can do within our scope of, of uh, responsibility and authority. So I, I think there's a lot of positives to build on. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Councillor Harris. Councillor McCann. Uh, thank you, Mr. Fox. Can I just, uh, make it clear that 70%, eight out of 10 councillors voted that um, uh, affordable housing was their number one priority? So the question was a little bit different than is it your number one priority? The number one priority, were, um, the priorities were shown in order of the first slide that you know growing the economy was still the number one priority. When asked what specific um, projects or areas of focus do we need to focus on going forward? This was by far mentioned the most. Okay, so, it, okay. so it's so a distinction between the number one priority and the one that was mentioned the most is what we need to focus on. Right. Does okay. that make sense? No, it does. And I'm glad I asked the question because I was, um, I was confused there. And uh, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to uh, learn from our session in the morning and I'm going to have an attitude change uh, instead of kind of being so aggressive with, with, with this nature. So just saying, uh, Mr. Fox, your, uh, your teachings are working on me. Uh, I, I think that this issue and, and, so, and social issues uh, is, really is the big divide. So I'm glad we, we, we're, we're getting right there. And um, maybe I'll change my attitude and ask, you know, uh, living in Barrie, 
I've asked this question before, but never really got a clear answer. What is affordable housing? Maybe I'll just open it up and, and maybe I'm missing something. So I'm not sure if there's a staff member or if, if uh, a counselor or Jeff uh, can answer that, but what does it mean? And when we were asking, you know, a uh, counselor asked, you know, uh, smart centers that they'd be having any affordable housing on our waterfront. And I just, I just want to maybe be open here. Like, how does that make sense to a builder? Well, since you mentioned me, I'll actually ask Ms. Miller to respond because we do have a definition that's in our plan, but, but maybe before she even gives that, I mean, you need a definition for policy purposes. And I think one of the challenges with our, our affordable housing strategy has been, there's a spectrum, right? From emergency shelter space for people who have zero uh, funds for housing, right through to you know, average market rent for, for, for say a middle-class household and how much they have to pay. Um, so, so there, you know, the challenge there is it means different things to different people at different times, but um, Ms. Miller, uh, in terms of the official definition that's in our plan, maybe you can help us out here. Thank you, um, Mayor Lehman. Uh, you're right, there is a definition in our official plan and in our um, um, community improvement plan, and it does speak to um, the county's definition, which relates to um, income and um, uh, the uh, percentage that you would spend on, um, on housing. And uh, as you have also mentioned, there is a continuum uh, and uh, certainly in all of our, um, our policy initiatives, we do try and uh, address the fact that there is a continuum. So even if we are not meeting the, um, the definition, the market definition of affordable, um, we can still be making progress on affordable housing by providing, for example, rental units that may not actually be affordable, but um, help the continuum uh, and uh, that is when we talk about generally more affordable or affecting that affordable housing uh, continuum. I uh, thank you for that. Uh, maybe I can talk maybe in dollars and cents. What percentage? Uh, if, if if what's the incentive for uh, a high rise? Or, or a standalone uh, um, uh, brick and mortar, you know, what is the incentive for them to do affordable housing? Uh, is there a financial one? And uh, is it 30% of, of cost? That's what I remember when I asked this question before that if it's a million dollar condo and they sell for 700, that's considered affordable housing. Is that, is that true, uh, Ms. Miller? Sorry, Councillor McCann, can you just repeat that in terms of um, what the percentage you're looking for? So is there a percentage? So to make math easy, if there was a million dollar condo being built in Barrie and they, uh, and, and they sold it for $700,000, so 30% less, is that considered affordable housing? No, it's not. So when we talk about um, the affordable housing percentages, I'm just trying to look up the, the most recent number around uh, $305,000 would be the um, uh, affordable housing um, dollar value for um, a home ownership. Uh, and it's around uh, $1,100 or $1,200 for, um, for a rental unit, which would be uh, equated to a one bedroom. So $300,000. So you're looking at uh, probably someone who has an income of, uh, 70, 80, uh, 65 grand, then they'd be able to get a mortgage for $300,000. That's roughly the math behind it. Anybody here better in math than I am. Okay. So I think that's around 60, let's say 60 to $80,000 you need to make to have affordable home. So I guess my frustration that I have with, with this, with this slide and, uh, and I'm, I'm gonna go further down the rabbit hole because I do believe that this, this issue is what separates this council, uh, is you know, asking landowners or asking builders to have a uh, affordable housing in a lakeshore property, right? Like I just, I'm not here to center anybody out. I'm just maybe telling what's been amplifying maybe some of the, the, um, the negative press or the, or, or, or the, or the stresses that I, that I have on a Monday night is questions like this. And, and it's, it's more than just a question. I don't mind asking a question. It's just the intent. Like how far back does that go? And it sounds to me that, you know, 73% um, of us um, said this is a concern of theirs. I'm just trying to understand the, the logic behind it. Does it make sense 
but this council will be talking about social services pretty much on a weekly basis. So um, maybe I'll just leave it as a statement and hopefully if somebody feels uh, up to maybe question that, having a little bit debated with that, but I think that sometime in the near future, we need to answer that question. Thank you, Ms. Fox. Okay, thank you, Councillor McCann. Uh, Councillor Harvey. And I just wanted to touch quickly on that because um, obviously affordable housing, uh, especially when you're dealing with it as a for sale units opposed to rental units are uh, two, two different uh, games. And I guess the big issue that I can see around units that are for sale, um, they might be affordable when the original purchaser buys them, but what controls could anybody or any government ever put on the resale value of those properties? And that's where I see a big issue uh, uh, on that piece of it, especially when you're talking about um, condos that obviously they're quite expensive and we'd be asking a developer to discount a certain percentage of them. Well, there's nothing stopping somebody from flipping that unit even before they even move in. So that's where I see a big issue. And obviously affordable piece, it's a lot easier to control when it's uh, rental units, especially uh, those units that are run by uh, Barry Housing themselves. Those are just my comments. Councillor Alwyn. Thanks Kirk. And can I just clarify what exactly you're looking for from us right now on what you've given us? Just our general thoughts or? Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and I mean, if we go back to the objective of the meeting today is really just to review the priorities, um, you know, which are the top priorities? What do we wanna focus on for the next two years? And what I just summarized was based on your responses, these were what, you know, the top areas of focus. So what does that look like? Do we all agree? How will we move forward with those? And are there others that weren't captured there that you want to talk about and make a case for. Okay, thank you. Um, so on, on this, the, the three that we uh, sort of had as our top concerns on the affordable housing and homelessness piece, I definitely think uh, thinking high level strategic priorities, there's definitely some opportunities for us to work more closely with the county, recognizing we don't have that jurisdiction. Um, there are ways we can come to the table and I think we are doing that, whether it's land, uh, you know, funding or incentive programs like the CIP. Um, we're doing a lot of that, but I, I mean, we can always do more. Um, and on recovering from the effects of COVID-19, uh, agreed. I, I would say based on some of our job numbers and our economic growth, uh, Barry's performing very well compared to some other municipalities. Um, so I'm inclined to, uh, to, to sort of stay the course and, and keep at it um, on that one. Uh, downtown and waterfront core projects, absolutely. Um, I think this is something um, that was not explicitly in our strategic priorities uh, from the beginning. Um, and I think it would be nice to have uh, it actually in there, like a safe and vibrant downtown as a key priority of this council, because I think that's something we certainly hear about a lot. Those are my thoughts. Thank you. Mayor Lehman. Um, thanks. Uh, I, I, I've got a couple of thoughts on the, the COVID-19 recovery in terms of perhaps second tier bullets that we could um, uh, look at that would, that would highlight the importance of supporting the business community and bringing, helping the, the economy uh, in, in particular needs that we have in Barrie right now. One would be around industrial lands and getting them, uh, having good serviced industrial lands for market. And the other one would be about the West end of downtown. Um, but I, I think just on that first priority that seems to be the majority of council that feel, I mean, my take on that priority is we, we've had it as a priority, but, but perhaps the issue, the, uh, severity of homelessness, um, it, uh, especially during COVID, has has become more severe. It's become more severe, 
Um, we're more concerned about it because of some of what's transpired this year in our community, what we're seeing in our community and what our residents are telling us. So that's homelessness. That's, it, it's not a separate issue, but it, the response is different than the broader issue of how much it costs to buy a house or rent an apartment in Barrie. Um, I mean, it's all one issue in the sense that if you can't afford a place, then you're stuck in the shelter system or couch surfing or ultimately perhaps living, living rough. Um, so our broader strategic response, since we're about our, our priorities today, you know, there does need to be a plan for how do we get more rental housing built in Barrie so that eventually rents come, come down or at least they don't go up as fast. And right now, everything's going up in price, purchase, rent, everything. So housing is actually becoming less affordable. And I don't know if that's one of the reasons why everybody made it such a priority or area of focus, but it was certainly one of the reasons why I think it needs to be an area of focus. So just quickly on those two things, the broader issue is one of planning policy and how do we encourage more rental housing to be built all over the city in whatever appropriate forms uh, that would take, whether that's three and four story apartments on arterial roads, high rise developments closer to the core, or townhouse developments in, in the, the right spot in suburban locations or in our new neighborhoods. Um, so I think if there's a strategic piece in that, it's how do we in the next two years with the price of housing going up so fast because partly because of COVID, but also just because of the strength of our economy, how do we sort of double down and make sure that we're getting that rental housing constructed? And then the homelessness piece um, is, is different. And, and I think uh, somebody else mentioned previously the supportive housing piece. I mean, we've known, and, and I think this council has heard presentations from the charitable community um, that service, uh, that try and ser serve our homeless population. That's what's needed. And I think the two things, COVID recovery and homelessness are related because right now our homeless population by and large are living in uh, hotels to allow for distancing. And the county right now is trying to lease another building to allow more people to come indoors into, uh, <clears throat> into distant spaces. I think the priority should be how do we make that housing permanent so that uh, people aren't, you know, when COVID's over and that emergency funding is gone from the province or from the county, uh, we end up still holding on to those supportive housing spaces because, or and shelter spaces. I mean, if we can hold on to those 100 to 200 units and convert them from uh, uh, shelter spaces to transitional or supportive housing, then we're making a real impact on what everybody seems to, to feel as a, an area of focus. Okay. Thank you, Mayor Lehman. Um, I'm trying to remember who was next. I think it was Councillor Ward. Actually, I think Councillor Natalie Harris had her sign up before me. Ah, apologies. Councillor Harris. That's okay. Actually, um, Mayor Lehman covered kind of what I was going to say with the COVID being pretty linked to um, affordable housing. Thank you. Councillor Ward? Yeah, I just wanted to say that, uh, you know, just addressing the point of whether what we can do about housing, um, I think all of our priorities, you look at them, I mean, we can't do them alone. It's not, I don't think we should look at it just because the city isn't, can't do it itself. I mean, everything except probably offering innovative and citizen driven services. Okay, that one we can do on our own, but even growing our economy, that depends on so many other levels of government and the private sector to accomplish that. Um, improving the ability to get around, as we found out on the, uh, Big Bay Point overpass. I mean, we need other levels of government involved for the province. So, you know, to say that housing, there's other levels of government involved, sure, but there's still lots of things we can do. In fact, we're right in the middle of our, doing our new official plan. That's a great opportunity to get affordable housing. I think we own land that we can look at for affordable housing. Um, we it, certainly, when every development comes, we can look at it as a way to get affordable housing or at least get maybe money to put into affordable housing. Um, offering incentives. I mean, there's lots we can do. So I don't think we should get bogged down on whether other levels of government or other forces are involved as well. I think we could still make it a priority to do what we can, um, not just that. So that shouldn't be eliminated. So just because we don't have full control over something doesn't mean there isn't a role we can play. Okay, so quite a few suggestions on ideas of what we can do. Um, and Councillor Kungal, I think you were next. Thank you. And um, 
to build on, I think, uh, Deputy Mayor Ward, um, around those partnerships, for me, it's really looking at still seeing this as a priority, but what's our intention? So, you know, where, where are we going to be deliberate uh, as we move forward over the next two years about um, uh, models of housing, um, increasing stock, but also retention? And so, for me, I'm hearing great compliments about our community improvement program. And when we look at that, there are elements where that those funds have gone to incentivize uh, stock that is seen to be more affordable. So for me, it's looking at if we care about this, how do we make sure that we are you know, building back that budget and we're bolstering uh, the incentives tied to that? I think we saw you know, some really great creative things staff are bringing forward. One recently was around you know, accessory suites and those pieces that tie to grant funding for individuals that um, are looking at this uh, to support subsidies for water infrastructure costs to be able to deliver that service to more units. Um, and embedded in that was um, a condition of meeting one, the affordable housing definition, but also maintaining, um, maintaining that unit uh, under that definition for 20 years. And so I think uh, it's looking at what, what are the tools that we have that have been working well? How do we protect them over the next two years and make sure there's some committed um, dollars or budget to still providing those incentives? And I guess um, also, how are we like, how are, how are we, you know, tabling items and directing staff and putting ourselves in, in the conversations to have spaces um, that also create clarity for the public? Where does this council on that continuum of affordable housing feel we can make a difference and is within our mandate? And so when we talk about affordable housing, I think sometimes we lose, uh, you know, there's different meetings, there's different definitions. I think there's a provincial definition and then we use one um, within our, our, our community improvement program. And so I think we also might need to look at, you know, where, what's our intention? Where do we think we can make a difference on that continuum of affordable housing and being clear about what we're asking and what we're hoping to shift the, the bar on. But I hope we look at it also around retention. We're having those conversations uh, often at the Seniors Advisory Council uh, with a focus on housing and seniors. And so where do we see the need, but also where are we forecasting vulnerability? And I'm seeing that more and more about being able to continue to afford uh, rental units. And so there's the building of stock, but then there's the also, uh, are there things that are within our role or conversations and partnerships we need to have that are proactive about being able to support individuals to retain uh, housing? And uh, sometimes I see if you own a house or if you have that as an asset, some programming supports you better because um, they create possibilities like property tax deferrals. Uh, and if you're renting, sometimes you have uh, maybe less uh, opportunity to look at access to some of those resources. So I think we need to look at two different pieces, but ideally also around retention of housing. Thank you, Councillor Kungo. Any other comments on at least the uh, areas of additional focus. Councillor Harris. Yeah, I think um, to go with what Councillor Congle's talking about with retention of housing. So that's a really great conversation that I actually had with um, Ms. Miller over the last few months with respect to a certain development in my ward. Um, I definitely, I think it would be a great um, thing to even have just a meeting about that and to really educate everyone on what are our limitations, what are the rules around, what can like, and, and also along with what Councillor Harvey was saying, that, um, you know, sometimes there, what really can we do to prevent the flip of affordable house even before a person is even living in it um, because of the market right now? So um, we don't necessarily have to do that right now and elaborate, but I think it's a really great point to have all of the council on board because I learned a lot by talking to Ms. Miller about what the expectations are that I had versus what are even possible right now. And uh, with the market being just so drastically, um, you know, hot or whatever you want to call it, I think it's really important that we all are on the same page with what, what can we even do? What are we even able to do? So that would be great. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Harrison. A lot of that speaks to Councillor McCann's questions as well. Um, for common definitions and so on. Okay. 
Any other comments on the top areas of focus? Okay, so what do we wanna add? Um, you've already started talking about some, what, what would I might call sub bullets to this, um, further meetings, more information. Um, what's not on there that needs to be a focus for the last half of the term? <clears throat> um, Mayor Lehman? I'll let Councillor Harris go first. All right, sure. I wasn't sure. <laughs> Thank you. Maybe we're going to head down the right same path. I'm not sure. But um, on our last two years, I think it's, it's really important to make one of our priorities just how we collaborate as a council together to, um, you know, we had a, a, a really great conversation around the interesting aspects and, um, you know, unfortunate aspects of having everything on Zoom and not having that personal connection that we used to have when we would be, we'd be able to sit around the semicircle in city council. So, um, you know, going forward, what are the things that now that COVID has presented us with all these limitations of being able to connect personally, what kind of, um, you know, checks and balances can we maintain so that we're not just focused on, um, you know, obviously it's the most important thing to focus on what's happening in the city and what our constituents need, but the, the way that we will, you know, effectively bring those points to city council is to work really well collaboratively. And I think that's always been our intention, but it's been very difficult. We've had a lot of very, very um, complicated uh, issues in two years that are presented in front of council that, that bring a lot of emotion involved. And we're, I think that's, we're, we're, we had mentioned earlier, we're curious people um, on council anyways, that's kind of who we are, but how are we going to move forward in a positive way collectively to, um, to manage the limitations that COVID has brought to us personally would be a really a big thing, I think. Thank you, Councillor Harris. Mayor Lehman. Uh, thanks, Kirk. I, I think um, I had a couple of thoughts about um, under growing our economy, uh, and I, uh, you know, I take the the um, results of the interview uh, to heart because I, I kind of had the same feeling that these these top five priorities or these five buckets cover so much uh, of what is important. What I do hear from residents. Uh, maybe at this point in the term, though, it's really about how do we um, how do we drive to uh, success by having more focused uh, or more specific uh, initiatives within each of them that uh, that reflect our residents' concerns and priorities. We've already talked a little bit about the west end of downtown. We know that there is interest in uh, trying to improve both the social and economic climate in the west end of downtown. Um, and there's been a lot of success in the downtown already, but uh, in, in the West End in particular, that's where we hear our residents uh, often expressing concerns. Um, but the one that I wanted to put on the table is actually around making sure that we have industrial, serviced industrial lands to allow our employers to grow. So we have a strategic priority that says help businesses grow. Uh, it, perhaps it should be more specific because our role in that is to make sure that they're serviced industrial land so that our largest, so when it comes to manufacturers, and that's of course just one 12% uh, of our economy, but it's such an important 12% for lots of reasons. Um, we don't have enough large industrial parcels within the city of Barrie that are serviced to compete. Um, other municipalities have lands uh, that are serviced and available and Barry is struggling uh, to meet the needs of just our own employers who want to grow and build a new plant or a large facility, let alone somebody who wants to move to Barry. So we've seen Bradford, you know, at, at the Highway 400 interchange uh, build their business park and so forth. So as an example of a strategic priority, I mean, it, it, it's kind of a next, it's, a, it's definitely second tier, it might even be kind of third tier, but ensuring that we have serviced industrial lands or build a new business park might be another way to say it in plain language um, to offer our employers to help businesses grow. I think it needs to be a, a priority of this council in the next two years uh, because I'm, I'm worried that um, we're going to lose out. And uh, I know that we have reports coming back to us that through our economic development department and from the private sector that 
there are companies that can't grow in Barrie because they can't find an available piece of land to buy and build uh, their next major facility. Thank you, Mayor Lehman. Uh, Councillor Jim Harris. Uh, thank you, Mayor Lehman. That's a, that's a that's a great thought. I was thinking as well as far as you know, our growing our economy was rated number one, which is understandable because it it ha it's an enabler for others, right? So when you have a, a good economy, hopefully your community is able to live in 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 the community, which you know gives you quality of life because you don't have to commute or you're able to live closer to home and enjoy kids' activities after work, those kind of things. So there's so many positives by having a strong economy. And I was wondering in your Thought about industrial lands, you know, are there ways in supporting businesses that have we evaluated the lands that we have now, the commercial industrial areas, then do they work for businesses? Um, I've had experiences with areas where, you know, and it was both a safety issue because there's no lighting and there's no um, sidewalks and there's small shoulders and people in, in transit didn't quite go down far enough to get people to their to their jobs. So you know, if you can find a way, can, do these areas really work? If you're having, if uh, Ms. Schlichter is bringing in a corporation to tour Barrie to see where they want to expand or whether if they want to come to Barrie, would they see our areas as, hey, that's a great place to operate my business and, and has the infrastructure around it to get people to and from it safely and efficiently. So uh, are there things that we can do with the staff uh, advisement to make our areas more, more attractive that currently exist? I like your idea about having more area because as you say, we're out of areas, but can we do more to make those areas attractive to business to compete against other communities who want them as well? So thank you. Okay, and I've lost track of who had their hand up next. Uh, I think it was Councillor Kungo. Thanks to sharing a, a comment on um, the industrial lands and growth. And a piece that comes to mind is, is how we do that. And I'm there's been great conversations just by the nature of us being, you know, um, um, working with staff and stakeholder groups about feedback on the draft OP. Um, and for me, what comes to mind that I'm not hearing that we've talked about yet, but the how we grow from a um, progressive green infrastructure, uh, adopting policies that uh, also show the way in which we grow and seeing some beautiful things coming out of, you know, urban design and the planning and, and uh, development team, but also around like, what are those policies we wanna be deliberate at bringing to the table? And how are we inviting or incentivizing um, an approach to growth that also is one that, you know, has specific um, kind of non-negotiables maybe, but incentivizes uh, the way in which we are um, growing that maximizes, you know, uh, you know, opportunities to mitigate negative climate impacts and, or is, is being deliberate about, you know, how we see our responsibility uh, through our growth plans uh, in, um, you know, trying to have a focused uh, uh, impact on uh, climate action. Okay. Thank you. Councillor Alman. Thanks, Kirk. Um, yeah, on the, the note of uh, economic growth and how we can support that going forward, um, one of the things that we consistently hear from employers in the city is about uh, the difficulty of uh, attracting and retaining talent. Um, and I think an important piece of that is uh, the culture of the city and uh, who feels welcome and that sort of thing. And we know this year has sort of been a reckoning in terms of systemic racism. Um, and potentially that's something we could look at is how do we support racial equity um, and become a more welcoming and inclusive place. Uh, and that uh, will help attract and retain talent. Uh, we know that the current economic downturn um, that we are facing is disproportionately affecting women as well. And uh, Barry has been uh, sort of in the media a bit about um, some challenges we have in terms of supporting women in our, in our community. Uh, there's been a uh, petition about women's safety in the downtown or lack of women's safety in the downtown. So potentially looking at gender and racial equity um, as a lens through which we can um, address some of these priorities uh, might be something to look at. Thank you, Councillor Allen. Councillor Ritma. 
Thank you, uh, Kirk. Um, I just wanted to uh, just sort of jump off from what uh, the mayor was talking about. Um, and I, I really think that it is, uh, you know, important for us to do some uh, support for our industrial area. And, um, and I guess, you know, uh, we should have a chat with staff, I guess, to see how do we, how do we really develop a, uh, an industrial strategy that really supports the industries that we have. And I, I think Councillor Harris makes a really good point about the, the, the situation in some of our existing industrial parks, but then also how do we, how do we attract new industries uh, to this area? Um, because I think that's, that, you know, it's fundamental to our economy and it's a fundamental to recovering from, from COVID as well. Because uh, there's a lot of people that uh, that need that kind of uh, employment. I think the other there's another piece to it uh, as well, and and that is the um, sort of the downtown and the waterfront. Um, and again, uh, Mayor Lumen mentioned the the West End of Dunlop. Um, you know, we need to I think develop uh, some sort of strategy to really um, make that um, a part of the economic. Uh, base of downtown and to really support uh, what's happening down there. Um, and I think our waterfront can play a role in that as well. Uh, so, um, yeah, I, I, I think in terms of implementing those things, I think we really need to sit down and, and do st some strategic thinking about how we can be successful doing that. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Rima. I believe, Councillor Thompson, you were next. Thanks, Kurt. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of glad the way this conversation went. So you've seen it firsthand. Mayor Lehman mentioned about the industrial lands having a plan go forward. And we take a left turn and talk about everything other than the conversation that Mayor Lehman mentioned about looking at the industrial lands that we have, incentivizing. And I actually brought a motion to council for staff to look at that and to be competitive, as Marilyn mentioned, about the industrial park in Bradford, and we're already throwing, you know, other things in the way. And, and this is, and look, all issues are important, but we need to focus on the ones that we're discussing, where Mayor Lehman had mentioned it about kind of a subsection of grow our economy. Look at the industrial lands, incentivize, you know, see what we can do for the companies we have to grow and to attract. And then we've talked about, you know, which are extremely important issues, systemic racism, safety downtown, the West End. Like, so those three places that were mentioned, um, they're not in the industrial lands. And, and that's where I truly believe that we've just got to, like I said, I'm not diminishing the importance of them, but we were on a topic about the industrial and with the affordable housing as well, we've got to be careful that we don't increase that number to be detrimental to a developer. Like if you force developers to go to a certain level, we've got to do what we can do. Like Councillor uh, Deputy Mayor Ward said, there's lots we can do. But I think we need to educate ourselves, have meetings on what we can do, and as a collective group, go to the other partners to attract them with what we can do. We're able to do A, we need you to do B and C to have the common goal. But I, I couldn't agree more with Mayor Lehman. We need the industrial lands for everything else to go, um, which is going to make it live, work, and play. And then it overflows into a better, you know, neighborhoods and people and everything. And we attract it. So that's, uh, I'm kind of glad it, it went this way. And I'm not diminishing the importance of the other issues. I just think that we got to stay on what we're doing. Thank you, Councillor Thompson. And, and if I can just um, maybe jump in quickly and, and say, you know, I was encouraging everyone to add in. Um, you know, their thoughts on what could be sub bullets for some of these original priorities that were uh, mentioned by all of you. 
Um, and so um, it, it, it did feel a bit like a, a bit of a brainstorm was encouraged. Um, if, if there's one topic that has been brought up, um, such as the industrial lands that you want to all dig deeper on, and we just focus on that, we can certainly do that specifically as well. So I'll take part responsibility for encouraging a, a variety of comments there as well. Uh, so, but good, thank you for that point. Mary Lehman, I think you were next. Yeah, I just wanted to suggest actually, Kirk, I've been listening to the discussion here and reflecting a little bit on, um, on the training earlier this morning. And you know, I think one of the challenges council has when we try and deal with these strategic issues um, is, you know, we'll set a priority or we'll say something's important as we did two years ago and as we will today. But then we often respond to whatever aspect of it hits a council agenda because that's what's on the agenda. So, it's, you know, we want to deal with affordable housing and then either a member brings an item for discussion or staff bring us a project or an issue arises and we have to respond to it as an individual piece, which isn't strategic, that's sort of tactical. What we miss is the, the middle step where we sort of say, okay, and this is a good example because the how becomes important. If, if today we say, okay, these are our strategic priorities. And one of the things that's coming out of today is doubling down on, on homelessness, for example. If one of them is a new industrial, a new, new industrial lands or a business park. That next step that says, here's our strategy as to how to do it, rather than just us saying, this is important, and then we react to what comes back and we say, oh, well, that wasn't really what I had in mind, or that's only part of this. And, and I've seen, I think, in the first two years of this council, some frustration among members, and I've felt it, that at times, because, you know, staff try and follow these strategic priorities in what they bring us, but because we haven't actually had that opportunity to delve deeper. And Councillor Kungle's point a few minutes ago was actually really good on this on the senior side because I want, you know, we have a seniors advisory committee who often forward us very good ideas as to how we might help seniors in our community. But but you know, that's a sort of motion that lands at a reference committee and eventually ends up at council. And there's no opportunity for council to get together, perhaps a little less informally and do a deeper dive. So I'm sorry, I'm speaking more to process here, but I think one of the things I'm taking away from today is if we are successful today in saying there are a few areas of strategic focus that we want to put more effort into, even if we don't get to uh, a full discussion as to how today, because probably we're not equipped for that uh, today either with the level of information available to us, we could maybe be doing that as part of regular council meetings or special special discussions at general committee uh, to, to talk about this issue of what's the right approach that we want to take to affordable housing? What's the right approach we wanna to take to business parks and, and industrial land strategy? And um, that may help us uh, function as a council to provide more strategic level direction, but be able to go deeper into these issues on how, not just, not just what. Uh, anyway, that's a thought on process and um, rather than content. Okay. Thank you. Um, Councillor Harris, Natalie Harris, I believe you were next. Thank you, uh, Kirk. Yeah, I think um, that's a really great point. And that's, um, I think process is a huge priority that we need to discuss more. Uh, I, I agree. We have these amazing priorities that we set two years ago that generally haven't changed. We're pretty happy with them. But I think it might be nice to have those in between conversations with staff. So for example, I'm Ward 6. Like what they, they do have the strategies and priorities and conversations behind the scenes of what we can do as counselors to improve those incentives or to, um, you know, help promote those incentives that we have for industrial lands, etc. cetera. Um, but it, it, sometimes that conversation doesn't happen, like Mayor Lehman said, until that is right in front of us at council. So being able maybe to have some one-on-one uh, -on -one conversations about our wards just specifically to be able to say, what is it that we can do to help promote behind the scenes right now and work on our own, my, for me as well, um, speaking to myself, my own and my own education level as to what I can help to promote. So it's not just staff that's saying, okay, this is good. Let's bring this forward. And we're all at council and that's the time. I really think procedure is education surrounding procedure is a really big 
uh, piece that needs to be kind of top priority. Um, that's the key. Learning how we can do better through the, the professionals that do this every day with our staff and our planners and whatever um, before it gets to us at city council is really where I think we will have some even more amazing solid presentations coming when they do. So a couple last comments. Thank you, Councillor. So on process, anyone want to add to that discussion as well? Councillor Ritma? Thank you, Kirk. Um, and I think we already know how to do this. Um, I think we just need to do it. If you reflect back on just a few months ago, we adopted a parking strategy. You know, that's that can be contentious. That is very complicated. It has a lot of moving parts to it. And you know what? Um, you know, we dealt with that, and I think we came out with a really good strategy. And um, I think everybody understood it, and I think it'll work. And I'm sure that if there's some pieces to it that don't work, we'll be able to go back and tweak it. But um, I, I thought that process went very well, and I think we know how to do it. I think we just need to apply it to uh, other situations. So Councillor Rima, can, can you possibly expand on what worked in that situation that we can take to apply to some of the different situations? Can you elaborate a little bit more? Sure. Um, um, what staff did was they, um, they had hired a consultant. They've done a lot of, a lot of work on, on, on putting a report together. And then they invited um, councillors you know, in small groups to discuss um, the process, uh, the, what the conclusions were and and we had the opportunity to everybody like they put out a kind of a draft i think and then we had opportunities to ask questions about it make comments about it and it was all fairly informal up to a point um and then at at uh, when when sort of everybody had some some thoughts about it um then the staff brought it to council and we had a discussion about it um at general committee, and then it was approved at council. I, I thought the whole process went very smoothly. Um, and, and I think part of the, the key to it was that um, we all got a chance to, to sort of make some comments about it as, as it was developing. And um, I think that was helpful. It, it, it probably was helpful for staff in terms of developing a strategy. More importantly, was helpful um, for counselors so that we understood the strategy and, and could give some thought to it. So. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Rima. Councillor Jim Harris, we're next. Uh, thank you, Councillor Rima. That's a great example. And, and just to extend the example, even in the parking, and I know yourself having Johnson's Beach and Councillor Aylin having uh, <laughs> Centennial and Councillor uh, McCann with Wilkins and myself with Minette's and um, Tyndale, we recently had an even more in-depth meeting uh, with staff about the particular strategies for the spillover parking that we, we were uh, experiencing from uh, COVID and, and the popularity of our beaches and moving forward, how do we deal with that? And also inside that, we had really good data and information from our residents, those who were most impacted by those areas. And so I thought that was a great example of really getting you know, the, the broad picture, the council, the staff expertise, and the residents most impacted by some real key issues, and then giving that information, having a real thoughtful discussion about how to then apply. So I, I really uh, do uh, think we have some great examples of process and engagement, and then application of that in a way that allows us to really uh, make the best decision with the information that we have available to us uh, for our citizens. So I think that was a really great example. So I'm thinking about how do you apply that with business or in the industrial areas around what they might need as it relates to improving the area to be either, either expand or make it more efficient, safer for their staff to get to and from the workplace. So there's some really good learnings in that. And I think staff did a wonderful job of engaging both council and citizens. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Harris. Uh, Councillor Kungo. And I'll add this to come back to kind of a, a next step. And uh, if I may, Councillor Jim Harris, you, you um, that co those comments gave me some good thought threads um, back to your initial initial comments about even, you know, deficiencies of our current existing assets. So if we care about, um, you know, maximizing our in industrial spaces, then 
you know, how, how do we um, also help uh, to identify you know, what information do we really care about and, and, and what are we seeking? Um, and for instance, you know, would there be a next step that um, we would then look to say, you know, are there assets we have that are not palatable to uh, different businesses and what are the deficit or deficiencies that they see? And then what is that ranking around cost versus uh, opportunity um, to look at uh, how do we bring some of those existing assets to a, to a better place? And how does that become a priority in addition to, you know, um, or over, you know, how do we establish uh, uh, new spaces or, you know, uh, a new area to incentivize completing um, some of that industrial land and uh, with good servicing. So that would even be great information. I'm not sure if we're going there next, but I mean, it comes to question to say, okay, well, how do we, how do we move forward in an informed way and informed decision-making? Some of that's coming through, I think, processes that, you know, uh, Councillor Reitman's talked about um, with, you know, how we get information, how we dialogue around information, but also then identifying what do we really care about and where are we focusing uh, funding uh, and investment? And so is that on existing or is that, is that on new? So I'd love to take the conversation around industrial lands forward um, and, and look at that. How do, you know, how do we be strategic in that space around uh, uh, improving our opportunities to, to attract businesses? Okay. Thank you, Councillor Kungal. Any comments, anyone want to build on that? Okay, Mayor Lehman, I think you were next. Thanks. I mean, I don't want to segue away from this if there's more that members of council want to talk about. But if if we move from sort of industrial growth strategy to to broader the COVID-19 recovery and the broader economic strategy for the city, I mean, we've um, I think small business is another piece of this. And I think we've uh, you know, the province has recently given us um, uh, a new tax tool, should we wish to investigate that. That's a that's a how. That's not a strategic priority. That's a one potential initiative that the city could take or not take. But it raises the question, and I think the whole COVID recovery focus has really raised the issue right now. And in, in you know the 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 world is um, polarizing. Uh, you know, with people now either get something from Amazon or a big box, or they get it from a local shop. There's there's less in between, uh, and and that polarization of either it's getting delivered through the supply chain from China uh, because we ordered it online or we're getting it from someone local, but, but, the, but there isn't a lot in between. It, that's creating a different kind of competition for our local small businesses. And where you're delivering a service, it's a lot easier because the, the service in many cases has to be delivered locally. But when you're selling goods, whether you're a retail store or you're a manufacturer uh, you know, or you're a farmer, um, or your food producer, it's it, it's much different, and the the um, need for communities to support their local economies uh, becomes different. And I think you know we so I'll give you a great example. We got an incredible farmers market, right? I mean, we our farmers market is one of the highlights of the city. People love it. Not even with COVID, they've done a wonderful job of pivoting to operating in person safely and, and building their online. I can't believe how much online capacity that bunch of vendors now have uh, compared to four months ago. So how do we jump off that and sort of strategically say, you know, how can we create um, new channels for local businesses, small businesses to, to sell their products in our community? Um, and, and I don't think that's intervening too far into the economy. I know there are some people who feel strategically, you know, what's a local government doing getting involved in, in trying to promote, um, you know, local merchants versus Amazon or something like that. And I'm not, not bashing Amazon. I've ordered stuff from Amazon too, but, but I think the, um, the, the there are some new tools we've been given. COVID is demanding this of us and it should. Um, so as another sort of strategic direction under helping businesses to grow and, uh, you know, ultimately supporting the creation of more stable and diverse jobs and even the tourism industry, because let's face it, interesting small businesses 
whether it's in a market, whether it's in a pretty downtown, um, whether it's in a, a, you know, a local uh, a shopping center, that shopping experience is part of the tourism experience. And it's often what you, you'll see places from Niagara on the Lake to Blue Mountain or Collingwood or others, that's what they're selling to tourists as an experience. So, you know, and that again gets to, you know, to some extent, what do we do with the, with the, uh, the West End and the potential for us to support our downtown where many of these independent shops and, and services are located. So I guess in that, I'm not sure what the right words would be, but I would say that in the second half of our term and coming out of COVID, a focus on supporting the growth of locally owned small businesses, just leave it at that level because that goes across all sectors could be a priority for us. And I, I think there are many more ways for us to do that than maybe we realize um, as a local community. And I think there's a lot we can learn from other communities that are, are doing things that we haven't tried yet. Okay. Thank you, Mayor Lehman. Um, I know there was, uh, so I see Councillor Owen, I think there was somebody who had their hand up first though. Who was that? Councillor Harris, Natalie Harris, yes. It's okay. I'm good to carry. Okay. On. All right. Councillor Allen. Thank you. Yeah. Just quickly, I want to make a comment on those uh, comments from Mayor Lehman. I think that was a <clears throat> great suggestion. Um, and looking at the, the farmer's market as sort of that small business incubator too, like we've seen the success of Homestead. Uh, they now have a permanent location on Dunlop. Um, so that's an opportunity for us to leverage uh, the Berry farmer's market, work with them, collaborate with them, um, to kind of create those incubation opportunities for small businesses. That's a great suggestion, thank you. Okay, other comments on, I think we were kind of shifting into ideas for the recovery from COVID. Um, anyone want to add in there or build on what's been said? Okay, I'm looking around, okay. Um, so, uh, I, I put it out there for other comments about what wasn't on this list. There were um, a few things we've kind of kept into the theme of these three buckets, if you will, of additional focus. Um, so are there any other comments specifically on these three or shall we shift into any, anything else that hasn't been talked about yet? Okay, all right. Other comments, other ideas, things we haven't talked about. Councillor McCann, thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Fox. Uh, maybe I'll ask a general question with, to the mayor and uh, the rest of the council members. Uh, the downtown, are your residents talking to you about it? And what are they saying? If you don't mind, Mr. Fox, maybe open up. Okay, Councillor Alwyn. Uh, yeah, I hear, I mean, particularly through COVID, uh, small businesses needing support, uh, needing more customers. We need more people living in and around the downtown. Um, also, uh, perception of a lack of safety um, is, is a real issue. I know the Downtown Business Improvement Association uh, talks about that a lot, how uh, we need to sort of change that perception and make sure everyone feels safe in the downtown. Uh, those are two, probably the two biggest things that I hear. More people, uh, more safety. Thank you. Who else wants Maybe. to comment on that? Yeah. Because a lot of you did say downtown. I heard it in numerous comments. Councillor Ritma. Yeah, I think that um, I, hear, I hear that as well. Um, the people don't the comment is made that I hear in my ward that, you know, I don't feel like going downtown because it's not, I don't feel that safe there. Mm -hmm. um, a couple of comments sometimes too, is that it's, it's always a bit um, uh, grubby, um, you know, like it's got the garbage. There's, there's often you walk down and, and there's garbage bags laying around and, you know, it's just not, it's just not pristine. I, I think that's the kind of thing I hear from my constituents. Okay, not sure if there was another hand. Any other comments? Councillor Harris, Natalie Harris. 
Yeah, I hear a lot about concern business from concerned business owners that are, I mean, you could just, it's sad that we're opening up the Dunlop area and this it's streetscaping is almost complete and you see just a lot more closed stores because of COVID uh, restrictions. So that's uh, really disappointing. And then also, yeah, the perception for sure of downtown, especially the West End um, and the perceived and real safety concerns that do exist. So, um, you know, I'd be interested definitely in, and in, in talking like on a more direct level about how we can improve the West End. Okay. Mayor Lehman. Yeah, I definitely hear exactly what Natalie uh, just mentioned. Um, the, if I was to locate the complaints that I've received, um, I would say 90% of them are west of five points. Uh, some of that has to do with the timing of construction. Um, some of that has to do with, uh, I mean, if we did a map of the, the active, uh, like the patios, you would find 90% of them east of five points. And I, I really, you know, my, uh, you're supposed to love all your children equally in, <laughs> in politics, but I'll tell you that my, my, my sympathies go out most or my, my support to the longstanding businesses in the West End who really want this to work and the new businesses who've chosen the West End that really want it to work. Um, you know, I think of the, the LaBeoufs and Town and Country Steakhouse and Red Tulip and, uh, you know, I, they, they really, really want to make this work. And, and I will say a couple of positives. I hear hugely positive comments from my residents about the streetscape. Uh, they really like uh, what they see in terms of addressing some of those concerns that Councillor Ripma talked about. Uh, I think that public realm that has been created, the broader sidewalk and the improvements are, are going to be great but probably not mostly until, you know, April next year when both were able to gather and the weather allows us to. So I think there's a real tough period for the next four months, but I think on the strategic side, um, uh, more broadly, I would say, you know, we've got these three enormous developments uh, that um, are proposed in our downtown. One is approved, one is on the edges of being approved and the, and the third is, is still in the works, but, you know, they will change the downtown, the west end of the downtown completely. Um, to have thousands more people living in that three block area will create a local market for businesses, uh, but it will also create that more people that, um, uh, that uh, uh, Keenan just talked about, which, you know, busier streets are safer streets. I've, you know, that is just the case. And right now they're completely empty in many cases because of COVID and because of the construction. And that is, I think, contributing to the sense or the feeling of no, of no safety. So, uh, but I actually don't want to say that as though it'll fix itself because here's my concern. Those major developments are going to be under construction for a while. So we've just had the street under construction. Then you're going to have these huge blocks of land that are under construction. And it's gonna feel like constant construction in the West End for a while. Ultimately, it'll be incredible. But in the interim, I think we're gonna have a bit of an ongoing issue, which will be that the, down, the West End of the downtown will feel like things are happening, but it's under construction. And so I think our public in interventions, by which I mean, do we do a project in the West End of the downtown, are gonna be really, really important and it's gonna be really important that those projects bring people to the west end of the downtown. And I know we're gonna have a conversation around this on Monday because of the precinct plan and so forth, but I'll just put out there right now that I honestly think um, we have this sort of four month, five month window for us to have a further conversation and discussion around how we can stimulate the economy of the west end of downtown and then we should just be going gangbusters at it once uh, uh, once the spring starts and COVID, COVID stops, uh, which hopefully will be the same time, but it might be longer, I guess. And the reason I say that, Mr. Fox and, and members of general committee is I feel like, you know, there's probably four pieces of land in the West End that are publicly owned 
that we have an opportunity to do something on or not. And I'm sure we're going to have a lively debate around what the right thing is on those different pieces. But there's the bus terminal, there's the the uh, Barry Central lands, there's the remaining piece of the waterfront where the gravel parking lots are, uh, and there's this the Sea Cadet site. And there's a potential to do uh, one or more projects on those, which I think can help bridge the next 10 years for the west end of the downtown as these huge projects build out and it becomes a much different place. In the meantime, though, I think if we're going to support those businesses and support the economy of the West End and really take advantage of the tourism opportunity that comes with, for example, something like a market, um, that's the strategic direction we need to, as a council, decide on. And um, so, again, for a strategic priorities session, um, I had thought about today, you know, there's this precinct plan that is the basis for what can be a West End revitalization strategy. But to me, and my, this is my last comment on this would be, my suggestion is it's not really a land use strategy or a, um, you know, a, a public realm or at least a landscaping strategy. It's not about what street furniture or street lights do we have in the West End of downtown. That's not the problem. The, the problem is we have some key social issues that we have to address. And I think we've already talked about that a bit today. The second piece is we need economic activity in the West end of the downtown. And, and that means how do we build the, an economic strategy rather than just a, a map. <laughs> uh, maps are great. I love maps. I'm a planner by background, but maps don't, don't create economic activity um, businesses and attractions and projects and people are uh, economic activity. And that's to me what we need to focus on in the second half of the term for the, for the West End. Thank you, Mayor Lehman. Um, Councillor McCann, can I go back to you? You, you posed that question. Was there um, some thoughts, some insight from the answers, anything you wanna to add to that? Yeah, I appreciate that, Mr. Fox. Yeah, I definitely do. And then I definitely have some strong opinions and uh, I definitely hear a lot of strong opinions from our residents. And uh, they think the downtown's like you can pretty much fire a cannon through it. It's 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 empty right now. And like uh, count, uh, Councillor uh, had mentioned, there's some real safety concerns. Now I'm not sure if those are real or they're you know uh, perception, but perception is reality. And uh, I'm just getting a little uh, tired of hearing that our downtown is is like a war zone. And I think it should be one of our uh, priorities. I think we need to pilot that. We need to, you know, uh, the best time to, to handle an objection is when you, we, we bring it up, not when our residents bring it up, right? And so I think that um, that's, a good sales, that's, a, that's a good sales tactic, but I think it has a lot of merit here that we need to address that a lot of residents aren't feeling safe downtown and what are we going to do about it? I mean, to me, if, if we accomplish one thing today, that would be my number one. Uh, my number two would be, we're, we're, we're finished at one o'clock today. 12.30. At 12.30. So we have a half an hour. I mean, um, I fear we're not going to accomplish what we, we all set out here to accomplish today. I just want to be honest. So maybe I can stimulate some more um, uh, discussion and, and maybe get to the root of the problem, which we haven't talked about. I brought it up twice, but no one else seems to be, be wanting to challenge with me. Um, and, uh, and so as one of our priorities is clean up downtown. I don't know. I feel like I was ADDing everyone there. Okay, thank you, Councillor McCann. Who wants to uh, contribute to that conversation? Councillor Natalie Harris is waving her sign. I don't know if you sorry. can see her. No, I can't. My, uh, my videos are frozen. I'm sorry. Thank you, Mayor Lehman. Okay, I'll yes. tell you who's got their sign up, but Natalie, Natalie was the only one indicating. No worries. Thank you. I agree um, with Councillor McCann. Um, I'm not sure how to word it to, you know, make it all encompassing, but this is an important thing that we need to have on our priorities for sure. And it needs to be a clear addition that can be public and in the media and everywhere that we are very much focusing on the downtown on all of those bullets because um, it's, 
it is, it's, you're right. It's absolutely deserves, Councilor McCann, it deserves its own conversation on so many levels. Okay. Councilor Allen. Thanks, Kirk. Yeah, I completely agree. Um, and I like, I like the words vibrant and safe downtown. I think it encompasses a lot of what we're talking about here. Um, and I like the idea of, of really highlighting that as a priority. I think it's important over the next two years. So I would agree with uh, all the councillors who have spoken on that. Uh, Mayor Lehman. I, I know we're not doing procedure here, but if, if we were, this would be at the point where I'd say we should I'd entertain a motion to add, uh, but but let's do that. I mean, we're having this as an open discussion. I think I think what I'm hearing is this is important enough that it should be a high level, a sixth priority. Um, and again, we're not. Although we, Mr. Fox, gave us a ranking earlier because we'd gone through that exercise. I wouldn't propose to make it sixth out of six. Uh, they're all they're all important, and we can decide what it looks like. But uh, I I think. Um, uh, and whether or not we want to say the full downtown or the West End, um, I would say in the sub bullets, uh, we could talk about the West End precinct plan or the West End revitalization specifically. Uh, and then a, a second sub bullet might be the, the safety question. Um, uh, but I, I would certainly support it. I kind of like vibrant uh, as a good word, um, but uh, I'm seeing generally nods. Um, so uh, maybe we add this as a sixth priority to make it explicit to our residents and to give us the focus on, on what we want to do. Okay, I think Deputy Mayor Ward, I believe you were next. Uh, thanks. And maybe to give it some focus, I mean, I think there's four, there's three issues we've discussed today. I mean, out of four, just to confuse things even further, but I think we want to bring industrial land. I don't, first of all, I don't think we have to add a priority. I think they all fit in the current priorities. Um, but I think we have to, we want to bring industrial, bring additional industrial lands onto the market and maybe improving the vibrancy of our downtown with a special focus on the West End, encouraging more affordable housing. And a fourth one I want to throw out there is, um, would be something about improving, expanding and protecting our public spaces for local residents. And I think it's, um, we've learned anything from COVID, it's that people, and, and even after COVID is gone, I think people are still maybe discovered they want to be outside, they want to enjoy our public spaces in the city. And what are our public spaces? Well, they're obviously the waterfront lands, our resident, our neighborhood parks, but they also include our, um, for example, our streetscapes, Dunlop Street, which we've done a lot of improvements, but I think, you know, we've shown by closing it for one or two days over the summer that there's a chance to expand our public uh, spaces and, and to make them more vibrant, to do something with them. Um, I think it also includes, public spaces also include public things like recreation centers, a future farmers, a future market downtown. I mean, those are public spaces as well. And I think that's something that we maybe need to focus on. In our, I, I like to add it for our last two years to really make those public spaces more of a key part. I mean, I think back to something that Mary Lehman put on, we were discussing protecting the lands on each side of our waterways that flow into the downtown. We've got to it into the water. We have a lot of them in the cent city center. And it said not just protect them, but make them places where people can enjoy. I think we've got a hint of that coming up on Monday night where we're going to be looking at getting some more space beside the new, the proposed new uh, condo or new uh, residential development. And I think those kind of public spaces we should put a lot of focus on because people, we really need a lot. We're, our population is supposed to hit 250,000. I think we need those kind of public spaces for people to get out to. I mean, to take some of the pressure off the waterfront, we need to make more public spaces, especially in our city center where we're expected to have a huge population growth. And I think we have to repair them by making, creating more public space downtown. Okay. Thank you for that great summary of everything that's just been talked about and, and expanding on the public spaces. Um, now, my video's froze, they're back now. So if somebody had their hand up, I missed it. Um, was there somebody next to comment? Okay. Ah, Councilor yeah. Hand, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fox. So uh, I guess the question is, you know, if we're going to put, um, I think we should just not put the West End of downtown, just put the downtown. I think it's better for a brand, less confusing for people. Uh, a lot of people in Barrie don't, don't uh, follow East and West. They, they, so I think they would confuse. Um, uh, secondly, you know, how are we going to do that now? And that's where I think that, you know, there has to be some serious discussion. I definitely have some strong ideas that I know are not um, shared by, by 
some council members, um, but I'd love to see how we're going to actually um, make the downtown more vibrant, make the uh, make downtown more more safe. Are we going to do that publicly? Is, is today the right forum? I don't know. Um, but you know, uh, I think that uh, if this meeting, if the outcome of this meeting was to unify this council, at least bring us closer to that to that unity, I don't think we'll ever be be united. I I still don't feel that we've we've made enough. Uh, leaps uh, towards that, Mr. Fox. I'm not sure if, if, if I can maybe get your your um, your observations. Uh, I'm sure this isn't your first kick at the can. Uh, are we getting closer, or do you feel that uh, that more is needed? Well, in in relation to the objective for today, to you know review the priorities, are they still the right priorities? Um, is there anything missing? What else do we need to do? Um, that's really what this discussion was about. Um, so let me just turn it back and, and ask you what, what is missing from your perspective here? Um, so, so more of the how is what I'm hearing from you, maybe more specific ideas on how to do some of these things could be part of the discussion for the last half hour. Um, but um, what's, what's missing from the, the unity piece for you? Well, I appreciate it, Mr. Fox. And uh, I mean, I think that the first session st started to be a bit of a kumbaya and it wasn't really what I was interested in, in, in talking about but I actually think it helped quite a bit. I think that there's a, there's a real sense around council members that uh, maybe have to be a little more sensitive, right? And, and so I think that's, um, I think we've accomplished that part getting closer together, but still what divides us is, you know, I believe social services, right? I'm just gonna say it again, you know, I believe that that issue of social services is what really separates this council uh, and puts a divide. And, uh, you know, my fear is, is that we're gonna leave today and it's still gonna be up in the air and still maybe be a little cloudy. And that actually may have done more harm than good. The, uh, you know, I'm hopeful, um, you know, I'm, I'm optimistic that, uh, that we'll start communicating more with each other and maybe some issues that we wanna accomplish. Like a question that I'd love to answer is like in two years time, where, what do you wanna see buried? Like, like what is the buried that you wanna see in two years? And reverse engineer it just so I get an idea where council everyone's coming from and then a, a great gift would be is if we can have a healthy debate about the expectations, right? And maybe my expectations are out to, are, I feel are, are not, uh, are not going to make it. And, and maybe I can make a decision say, okay, I'm going to stop talking about, you know, bringing a, a horse stable uh, downtown Barry, right? Because I just don't have the majority of council's interest and it's not the best for the city of Barry. And so I'm not going to talk about that anymore. Right. And I think there's some real issues that, that, that this council has. So I don't know. I'm a creative guy and I just kind of thought of that right now and didn't put a lot of, a lot of um, you know, thought into it, but definitely um, would love to hear what the other council members think with that statement. Okay, so um, I like your analogy of it's a little cloudy. What do we need to do to part the clouds a little bit here in the next half hour? Councillor Harris, Natalie Harris, you're, I believe I saw you next. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Fox. I think, uh, yeah, I agree, Councillor McCann. I think that I propose that we, you know, moving forward have, um, a specific gathering, whether it's all of us or half of us or whatever, to speak about the downtown um, and bring concrete suggestions, you know, evidence related if necessary, um, ideas from other cities. I know when we talked about that a little bit when we had our pre-conversation about, you know, let's, let's, let's bring some actual some more it's not that we don't ever do that but some actual real ideas of what we're, we would like to see happen and how we can see change and betterment in our downtown and maybe show this is how other cities have done it etc um, but to just not end the conversation here to really give that newer highlighted priority a little bit more uh, attention afterwards as well okay thank you Mr. Fox, if I can uh, jump in, um, I wonder by way of structure and, and for the purposes of moving uh, council forward, uh, I think I and, and staff have heard, I think resounding around the two uh, issues, the, the employment land slash supporting local businesses uh, and the downtown, whether it be the Western portion or downtown vibrancy, downtown safety. And those two, I think have, have percolated consistently through councils, you know, um, conversation on this, it might be helpful if council or general committee called a vote on those two items as to whether they should be added as bullets or sub bullets, 
um, uh, Re Rebecca James Reed's team can do the wordsmithing of what that exactly looks like and, and certainly present that back to council. But I think for clarity in the interest of moving it forward, those two continue to percolate. Uh, I think that there is, is at least uh, you know, general consensus around that. Um, the, and then the social housing piece, if, if council wants to continue to talk around that, I think certainly there is some merit in that, but it, it feels like those two pieces uh, might be a bit of a, dare I say, slam dunk, uh, and perhaps it would be appropriate to get general committee to vote on those, and then we can come back to you uh, with the, the verbiage uh, and, the, and the areas where we think that we can move the needle on that in your next you know, 18 to 24 months, if that, if that works. Uh, Mayor Lehman, I saw your I saw your hands. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so uh, thanks, Mr. President. I I think yet you know in half an hour when the discussion is done, or now if we want to just get these two done, uh, yeah, a motion that um, that adds uh, uh, these these two pieces uh, probably would be good. I don't want to lose track though of what a couple of other members have said as well. Um, uh, Barry, I think, got lots of nods around his public space piece. We do have create great public spaces already in our priorities. So maybe it's a case of adding some focus or detail and we could talk a bit more about that as well. Um, what I was gonna ask Mr. Fox is, um, uh, you know, my take on the industrial lands piece is that's a sub bullet within grow the economy. I don't think that needs to be a high level separate strategic priority. I would probably uh, add that as a fifth sub bullet under growing our economy um, and, and it's, you know, be something along the lines of ensure a supply of serviced industrial lands or build a new business park or have an industrial land strategy. We'll let staff come back with perhaps the right words. So that's a sub. I, I think one of the questions general committee should talk about now is, uh, do we want the downtown as its own sixth high level priority? It has been in the past. Uh, this is actually, I think, the first council where it wasn't explicitly in the start of term priorities. I think things have changed. I think it it merits at least at least a sub, if not its own uh, own bullet, because I think if we do it as its own sixth priority, I'm seeing nods here, then the opportunity uh, becomes, can we add two or three things within that area of focus? And we've already had quite a bit of discussion around that. Uh, there's the the West End piece which is frankly at council on Monday already. <laughs> uh, there's the support small business piece, um, which I think we, I would argue for, we should have as an explicit second bullet. And the only challenge with that is if we stick it in the downtown one, it suggests we're not supporting small business all around the city. And, and for that reason, I'd put, put it into the, I'd actually put it under the economic one because I don't want our residents to believe we're only supporting small business if they happen to be in the downtown. Uh, so just some thoughts on on where we go from here. Um, so I, I'd, I'd be interested in hearing everyone's views on, uh, do we need a second or a new sixth high level priority for the downtown? If yes, uh, what would go in as sub bullets? Councillor McKenna. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Fox. So I, uh, I definitely think we should have a, uh, a separate heading, a six heading, and uh, I think downtown. And as subheadings, I think the first thing we should do is we should have a meeting with the BIA. I think that all uh, 11 members should meet with all of the BIA. We can do it virtually, uh, we can do it live and just uh, hash out exactly what they feel um, you know, that, that we need to do working with them and you know, what other participation that we know. Knowing full well that they're gonna ask for the moon and we gotta somehow bring it, bring it down. Um, yes, Mr. Harris, I've got my eye on you. And, uh, and, uh, and the second point is, is talk about you know, uh, developers. I mean, I, I, mean, I I, I want to know why these developers aren't putting cranes in the air, right? And I think that we need to have some dialogue. I'm not sure if you, Mr. Lehman, or, or, uh, or Mayor Lehman, or, or have, have dialogue. I know I talk to Gary Silverberg quite often, but Joe Santos, you know, he, every time I talk to him, I feel like there's, there's going to be a crane next week. And uh, there's, there's, nowhere, there's nowhere near. Um, the Lack House, you know, uh, the HIP development, maybe getting some more information on where are these projects and what, where are the cranes? So uh, that should be a priority. Uh, third one should be, let's talk about the homeless. Let's talk about the social services that are downtown, right? I mean, I definitely have some strong opinions on where they should go, I, uh, and they're not there. Uh, I like to put them somewhere else, uh, which I know is, is, is not maybe a, a popular amongst this uh, council. 
but you know what I mean? If we can find a better home for them, I believe that our downtown's the heart, right? And and I believe that there, there's, there is a better home. So those, those are three that I would like to like really like, like knock out, you know, uh, today's newspaper, Rebecca James Reed puts out our news flash. This is what we're doing for our downtown. I think, I think those three are, very, are three very low hanging fruit. Doesn't take a lot of uh, intellect to, uh, to, um, uh, to make that happen. And let's get engaged with, uh, with our BIA. Uh, is Robert Thompson sleeping? Thank you, Councillor McKenna. <laughs> Other comments? I see some videos are frozen, but uh, Councillor Alwyn. Thanks, Kirk. Uh, yeah, on the sub bullet idea, I think, um, you know, promoting uh, sustainable development and redevelopment in the downtown would be an important uh, piece. Um, I think uh, addressing the safety issues uh, is an important piece. Um, I think we could even maybe tie in the public space uh, idea here. We know that public space is, is particularly important in the downtown. So maybe something around that. Um, and just a attracting people to the downtown. So I don't know if that's you know, looking at marketing or just looking at uh, how do we make it clean and beautiful um, how do we make it welcoming and inclusive uh, so that everyone feels uh, like they have a place in the downtown? Um, just some suggestions there. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Allen. Uh, Councillor Harris, Jim Harris. Thank you, Ms. Fox. Uh, yeah, I, I like the idea of that uh, reconnecting uh, and uh, uh, with the BIA, and not that we're not connected, but even, even the understanding that being on the same page and working together collectively. And I'll give an example, and, and people don't always know all the facts, but with the closing of the downtown, which uh, was very successful in September and we extended and the weather um, largely helped, but people criticize that. Why didn't council do that earlier? But we, that, that offer was extended many, many weeks prior. And in deference to our BAA members who weren't fully ready as a collective to commit to that, it didn't happen. And that's not a criticism, it's just a, it's just a reality. We, we are partnering with our BA. We're not just closing down streets because we think it's right. We actually work with them very closely. So I think, again, that collective messaging, we are Team Barry and working together today to really help engage that, um, you know, the, the collective energy and, and, the, and the investment that they invested their lives invested in the, in the downtown and the businesses that, that, that thrive and the jobs they create for our community. So, yeah, I think it's great to, you know, that comment about re-engaging re with the BIA is a wonderful comment. And, and I think that should be included in our, in our action. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Harris. So I feel like there's been a lot of momentum in this last few minutes, just around town and creating sub bullets and refocusing the priorities that way. Um, who hasn't had a chance to add anything to that yet? Hey, a couple more. Councillor Kungal. Uh, yes, thank you. Um, a couple things come to mind, and I think it's also as we go forward, you know, what's all the input that we have that can also contribute to how some of those um, pieces and actions are shaped. So, you know, our parking strategy also touched on the downtown and downtown considerations. Um, the BIA as a, as a, as a board and, um, as a key stakeholder, but also then, you know, even my own appreciation of, you know, um, what are the learnings that even Ms. Schlichter, um, through her engagement with businesses, add perspectives. So, you know, I'm, I'm not um, criticizing it in any way, but, you know, I, I'm not sure if, you know, the BIA around representation, uh, does it capture a full perspective? And so while we are looking at doing particular stakeholder engagement, how do we make sure that if some of that is from an opinion of property owners versus business operators. And I think that's important to make sure that we have both of those perspectives. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Kungal. And I'm missing who the next comment was. I apologize. Thank you, Councillor Harvey. Oh, you were muted, then unmuted and muted. Touchy laptop I'm on there today. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I, I just uh, actually wanted to expand on uh, Councillor Harris's uh, comments about the downtown BIA. I think too, it's uh, from an ec economic recovery standpoint, important that we don't forget uh, the rest of the businesses too. And, and really the engagement should be with the chamber also, uh, because obviously they uh, encompass a, a whole slew of businesses that are outside of uh, the downtown core. So that way uh, we're working to ensure economic recovery for everybody and not just uh, not just one group I think is important too. Um, I know there was some mention earlier too about a marketing campaign. I know we've heard, heard a little bit of it and we've seen it on social media with the hashtag shop local, but um, may, maybe it would be important to uh, to really start a, a shop local uh, marketing campaign. Uh, they had a similar one back in the 80s when it came to Shop Canadian and uh, and it was very successful. And like, I mean, all, almost with all the uh, the products coming offshore nowadays, we almost need to start a Shop Canadian uh, one too. But uh, those are my thoughts. I just wanted to make sure that uh, we're not uh, we're not forgetting uh, all, all of the businesses involved because realistically I think uh, we represent all of Barrie and uh, and not just uh, certain certain cores uh, but obviously our downtown core is very important and I have uh, heard the same issues with uh, some safety issues and I know there's been a couple of uh, news reports uh, recently where things have occurred that shouldn't have occurred when people can't feel safe even walking down during the daylight uh, so obviously there is some work to be done and I look forward to uh, to us moving forward on that. Thank you, Councillor Harvey. Great addition to uh, stakeholders for this last initiative. Um, Councillor McCann. Yeah, uh, it's, it's, it's McCann, not McCann. I'm sorry, McCann. Uh, but I, I like the way that sounds too though. Um, I kind of get a little <laughs> more clarity from Councillor Harvey. Uh, do you want to uh, have downtown as a separate bullet? And do you want to engage the BIA? And do you want to let the, the uh, Barry know what we plan on doing short term? I was a little unclear on, on, on what you thought was best. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not changing the direction here. I just wanted to highlight that um, not only should we obviously be engaging the BIA, but I think it's also important that we, uh, we engage the chamber uh, also. I just wanted to make sure that uh, we didn't uh, lose the chamber in, in the mix of all of this too. Okay, all right, thank you. Okay, any other comments? Rebecca, I see your hand, thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you for the conversation today. It's been very helpful. I've got pages and pages of notes and I just thought it might um, be helpful if I kind of um, share kind of where my head's at and see if we're aligned um, as we move forward for this. So I've heard um, an interest, but I think it would be very helpful for staff further to what um, uh, CAO Prowse mentioned. If general committee is wanting to add that sixth bullet about a vibrant and safe downtown, if you actually um, called a vote on that. I think that would be very helpful. And then from there, I've heard several um, sub bullets and I really like um, how Councillor Jim Harris built off what Councillor McCann was saying about engaging the BIA. I think in a strategic priority document, we wouldn't wanna just say have a BIA meeting. I think having that more general um, keeps us going through various issues as Councillor Harris mentioned, um, the example he used, keeps us going for the two years. So I think keeping it at that higher level is probably um, uh, really consistent with what our other priority sub bullets are. And then I heard about attracting people to our downtown. That's nicely aligned with what council supported with the tourism master plan and our wayfinding signage and some of those projects that are already planned in the next um, year to two years. Um, also the safety issue. So we'll come up with some wording and report back in the form of a um, media uh, or a staff report, I mean. Um, so then the other issue that I think would also be helpful if general committee took a vote on is specifically around the um, sub bullets about the, um, uh, sorry, I'm just checking my notes here. So the serviced industrial land uh, and um, supporting the growth of locally owned small businesses. And if we wanted to call that out as sub bullets. Um, and then the last piece that I think we need to have a vote on is the um, comments from Deputy Mayor Ward, um, whether we want to specifically um, call out more as a priority item, which is the improving and expanding public spaces for our residents. That is listed in our priorities, but if we want to call that out, I think it would be helpful to um, have that uh, 
voted on by general committee. So that was all I kind of had um, in terms of decision points. And then I think the next point, um, plan, next steps would be that I would propose would be we would take this back, work as staff, and come forward with a staff report um, with the or a memo, depending if you vote on this tonight, with the specific wording. And then we can do the um, communications and update our um, uh, media and um, our website with the priorities. And then we could also um, get ready to launch our dashboard. So that would be kind of where I think is the path forward. Okay, thank you. So I believe I heard a request for at least three votes and I see uh, Deputy Mayor Ward uh, request to speak. Why don't we defer to you and then uh, we can look at those three votes. Sure, and just in light of the comments, I wouldn't mind saying uh, either my comment to improve, expand and protect public spaces in the city center. I don't mind defining it just in that area. I think for purposes of this, it might be a sub bullet under the, uh, the downtown one in general. Thank you. Uh, Mayor Lehman, I believe you were. Yeah, if, uh, if Deputy Mayor Ward uh, is content with that, I, I think what I heard then is two new sub bullets under grow the economy, one around uh, industrial land strategy, the second around supporting local small businesses, and then a new bullet for the downtown with I think four sub bullets uh, because Barry's would have been the, the fourth public space and then the other three that uh, Ms. James Reed had outlined. Um, so if somebody wanted to move that, I don't know if you're ready to do that, uh, members of council, or if you want to talk about some of them some more, but it sounds like we've got a new, new high level priority for the downtown with those four sub bullets, and then another two that we want to add under growing the economy specifically. Somebody want to move that or, or speak to them? Councillor Harris, Natalie Harris, is that a move or you want to speak? I say we move it. I think that everybody's on the same page. I'd be happy to start that if need be, or I think it's great. Mayor Lehman, I'm gonna to defer to you to the voting process for proceeding. Yeah, so just since we're probably into discussing a motion now, I'll, I'll just chair that part, thanks. So uh, Councillor Harris has put the motion on the floor and to be, to be clear, um, our staff are gonna come back with the exact wording. So. Um, I think the areas uh, of, of interest are not, uh, are what we've talked about, but that the specific final language, our staff will report back to council with their proposed language, and then we will approve it at that point. So don't worry if you're concerned that there's wording that might have been missing in what Rebecca had just uh, read out. I think the, the important thing is that all 11 of us have a shared and um, aligned view of what we are adding as priorities. And I saw lots of nodding when she was talking. So I'm going to assume that uh, there's good alignment, but um, uh, on the motion that's on the floor, uh, would anyone like to comment, comment further? Okay, if not, I'll just say that was really good work. Oh, Keenan, go ahead. Sorry. Um, one thing that, uh, and I know uh, this might not you know, have the consensus that's needed. But one comment I had thrown out there was about promoting gender and racial equity, just because of what's happened this year. Um, I think it's an important thing to highlight. I feel strongly about it, but I understand if council doesn't, but I'm wondering if I should move that as an amendment or move that as a separate motion. Um, if I'd like to see that as a sub bullet point, maybe under fostering a safe and healthy city, uh, just procedurally, what would you suggest? Uh, just because we've got this on the floor from Councillor Natalie Harris, why don't we just deal with what's on the floor and then uh, I'll come right back to you and you can and we can have that conversation. Okay, that's good. Uh, so you. just just in terms of the six that are on the floor at the moment, uh, six sub bullets, I guess, and the one new high level bullet. Uh, any further conversation about what's on the floor? Okay, I'll call the question on that. Uh, those in favor of adding those as strategic priorities, I am as well. Jim, yes, I think I saw everybody. So we are unanimous on that. Uh, thank you, that was really good work, uh, members of uh, General Committee and Council. Councillor Owen. Thanks, Mayor Lehman. Uh, so I guess I would move that uh, we create a sub bullet and uh, hopefully staff can look at some wording around promoting gender and racial equity, potentially through collaboration with stakeholders or something along those lines. Uh, and to put that as a sub bullet under safe uh, and healthy city. Okay, uh, comments on that, Councillor Natalie Harris. Yeah, I don't Sorry, know. Sorry, I'm gonna, actually, should yeah. I turn this back to Kirk? 
Happy to if you want me to. We, we've got five minutes. Why not? You're here. We're going to use your services, sir. So, right. Kirk, you can uh, you can lead us through trying to reach consensus on this on this issue if there's uh, further Absolutely. work to do. Uh, and maybe we'll just let Natalie kick us off and then. Thank you. Uh, sure. I guess this general committees. Um, I guess we probably don't need a seconder, but I would definitely be in favor of that for sure. Thank you, Councillor Harris. I saw another sign, but I wasn't sure if it's to speak. Councillor Harris, Jim Harris. And then Councillor Harvey. Yeah, I'll just quickly say, I think this fits well, because one thing that we have done uh, in the past year was the uh, for, the forming of the Anti-Racism Advisory Committee, right? So it fits, so all, we already have a how, a, a driver for that effort. So I think it makes perfect sense. So I would support that, absolutely. Thank you, Councillor Harvey. Thanks, Kirk. Uh, yes, I'm definitely uh, supportive of this. Um, like, I mean, I, I know the wording of it's very broad, but uh, uh, like, I mean, I've already had some discussions even when it comes to uh, the makeup of our own staff here uh, at the city and, uh, and how we can, uh, we can improve diversity within the city itself. So this is definitely uh, in line and, uh, and definitely supportive of, uh, of this motion. Thank you, Councillor Harvey. Any other comments? Okay, the heads are okay, saying so no. Uh, I, I would love to see council adopt this. So what we're talking about is another sub bullet under uh, fostering a safe and healthy city, which I think is a good spot for it. Uh, and again, our staff can bring back tweaks to the wording, but uh, it's explicitly making a strategic priority, the pursuit of gender and racial equality in Barry, which I, I love as a priority. So uh, that's what's on the floor. If there are no more comments, I'll call the question. Those in favor? And nobody is, but I'm in favor as well, so that's unanimous. Uh, anything else, members of general committee? Uh, I just wanted to mention something by process from takeaway today, because for those who want to do deeper dives on some of the issues that we've raised here, I really did hear that. And, and I'm very conscious that, you know, with, uh, we often use reference committees for that. And, and we can all attend a reference committee meeting. So for example, if we wanted to do a deep dive on, on the affordable house or deeper dive on the affordable housing issue, uh, city building committee would be a great place to do it. Or we can do presentations at general committee. I mean, there are procedural ways that we can do these things. But one thing I wanted to mention that I really took away from today is uh, council's interest um, in having some strategic involvement on the, uh, on the, uh, the implementation of some of these priorities uh, in our specific areas of focus. So we're not sort of setting the high level priority and then just reacting to how things end up bubbling up to us, because I think there's a, a feeling that maybe it doesn't always align with the, the priorities that we, we may hear in our community, or we're only capturing some of the issues. So what about the rest of it and those sorts of things? So I'm gonna take that away. I'm gonna talk with staff about how we might do that. I'll talk with the committee chairs, councillors McCann and Morales about how we might use the reference committees to do some of that. Um, but I think that would be a great way for council to spend some more, a little less structured and more strategic by which I mean the the broad, not just a project or a specific site or something, but the whole issue of affordable housing or seniors or small business. How do we as council uh, go further towards our goals um, after today? So as part of a reset. Okay, thank you, Mayor Lehman. Um, at this point, if there's no other comments, um, we can, I, I, I don't know if I'm saying this correctly, move to close the meeting. Is that uh, fair or? Yeah, we've had the uh, motions on the priorities. Ms. Cook, is there anything else we need to do while we're sitting as general committee? No, Mayor Lehman. Okay. Uh, I want to thank everybody for spending a Saturday morning uh, in this way. It was very, very useful uh, on, uh, on how we work and then especially on what we're going to work on. Um, so uh, there's more to come. Um, Ms. James Reed, this will be back in front of council, I assume maybe first of the new year kind of thing. Thank you, Mayor Lehman. Um, certainly we will be doing it as fast as we can um, to get it out to the public. Um, so I just, I, I don't want to come in on an exact date. I would, I would hope that I could get it to you sooner than that, maybe in a draft format, but for sure by first of the year. Great. Okay. And uh, thank you very much, uh, everybody. And Mr. Fox, uh, thank you.
uh, I do want to say a special thank you for leading us through uh, this morning's session. And uh, I think your your help was was very very instrumental was instrumental in, in helping us get to this. So, thanks for that, everybody, and enjoy the rest of your weekend. General committee is.